Hi everyone, Frank Kim here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple, very cheap smoke bomb. So, our three ingredients are sucrose, also known as common table sugar, um, potassium nitrate, and paraffin wax. So how these work is the heat and gas produced from the reaction between potassium nitrate and sugar um, evaporates our wax and when the wax is cooled when it escapes the nozzle of the container it will condense to form very small opaque particles which create a dense smoke effect. Now the reaction between potassium nitrate and sucrose releases a huge amount of gas. Um, it's going to release a lot of water vapor, a lot of CO2, and a lot of nitrogen. Um, a sucrose molecule contains 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms. So it's a big, big, heavy molecule. Now CO2, nitrogen, and water vapor make up a significant portion of our atmosphere, so our smoke is completely non-toxic and safe to breathe. I just wouldn't recommend setting it off inside, as doing so could displace the surrounding oxygen, cause suffocation. But otherwise, it's completely safe to set off outside and breathe. So let's make this stuff now. So our ratio to potassium nitrate and sugar is 1 gram of sugar to 2.93 grams of potassium nitrate. And each gram of this mixture, excluding the wax, is going to make 176.4 liters of gas. That's the equivalent of 176 of these beakers, from the bottom marking to this 1,000 milliliter marking. That's 176 of these. That is a lot of gas. And all that gas is going to disperse our condensed wax after we've evaporated it. So let's... Uh, Let's get some sugar. Oops, I forgot to zero that. Okay, one more spoonful. All right, we've got 28 grams of sucrose. So let's multiply that by 2.93. times 2.93 is 82.04 so we're going to need 82.04 grams of potassium nitrate now you can easily get a large amount of this stuff at a um, at a farm supply store or you can get it in the form of stump remover all right let's add our oxidizer now 82.04 grams of potassium nitrate Okay, now let's mix this up. <clears throat> Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm melting the paraffin wax, and we are going to add our mixture to the liquid wax here. Now you only need a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit of heat, so just just set your uh, hot plate on on the lowest setting, just enough to melt that wax. This way, there is um, there's no risk of accidental ignition, which is not good, of course. So let me wait for the rest of this to melt, and then I will resume the video. Alright, so I've liquefied all our wax here. Again, keep the temperature on very low heat. Um, because if you accidentally ignite this, as I stated before, under standard atmospheric temperature and pressure, 
each gram of this fuel is going to make 176.4 liters of gas. So you're going to smoke yourself out of your house. <laughs> So as you can see, as long as you keep the heat very low, there's not going to be enough energy there to start the reaction, so you don't have to worry about accidental ignition. So you're going to need approximately half a gram of wax for every one gram of um, for every one gram of potassium nitrate and sugar mixture. Alright, so you want to mix this until it makes sort of a, kind of a slurry here. Oops, kind of like, kind of like slushy snow. Now the hardest part is to find a good container for this. You can either find a nice uh, thick walled cardboard tube like this, um, or you can or you can add sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda, to cool the reaction. When heated, uh, sodium bicarbonate decomposes to form CO2, sodium carbonate, and water. And water has a very, very high specific heat capacity, meaning it can absorb a lot of energy without heating very much. So that's going to cool your reaction and slow it down a bit. Let's glue the end cap. All right. And let's add our mixture. Yeah, so just, just uh, pour the mixture into your uh, container while it's still warm and workable. Alright, so I'm going to test our any mixture without a container first and then We'll test our light and throw smoke bomb right here. Okay, let's ignite our mixture without the container first. As you can see, it makes a nice thick smoke screen. And of course, it burns a beautiful lilac purple without a container. This is due to the potassium ions in our mixture. You can view this, this uh, principle in greater detail if you watch my uh, How to Make Colored Flames video. Okay, let's test our light and throw smoke bomb now. Now these are these are great for paintball and airsoft games or 4th of July. My only word of advice here is just to watch where you throw it as a small amount of hot solid will be emitted out at the end. And of course that's a fire hazard. So let's ignite it. All right, we have ignition. So this makes a great smoke screen if you want to mask your dance in an airsoft game or you want to or you want a nice crowd pleaser for a 4th of July, July event, or you want a 
fog effect in your yard for Halloween. As you can see, it is making a huge amount of gas. Huge amount. Again, this is safe to breathe. Um, all it is is paraffin wax particles, carbon dioxide, uh, water vapor, and nitrogen. The tube will be, unless you add sodium bicarbonate coolant, coolant scalding hot, so do not touch it. All right, we've got a nice, dense smoke screen all the way over into the neighbor's yard. As you can see, it's a very slow burning mixture, so uh, it will have a very, very long burn time. Alright, so as you can see, hot solid was leaked from the end. For, and for this reason, you're going to want to watch where you use it. Um, watch for dry leaf piles on anything that might burn. If you run any of this, you can either improve your uh, nozzle system um, and allow le less uh, hot solid to escape, or you can add a coolant. As you can see, we've got a big lingering cloud of smoke over there. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.